Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fall Housing Webinar of the University Residences. My name is Frances. I go by she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm going to be your host this evening. I'm a student employee with Western Washington University's admissions office, and I'm also a third year double majoring in communication studies and sociology. And I also lived on campus my first year. For the first of the three webinars with WW Housing, I'm joined with some of our residence life leaders who are here to answer many of the questions you have about living at Western this fall. We usually get to show off many of our showrooms across our beautiful 215 anchor campus and answer your questions in person at our info fair. To answer as many questions as we can within the next hour, let's not waste any more time and meet our panelists. For questions that we don't get to, Housing will post all the questions asked today and their answers on their website at housing.wwu.edu. In residence life, we like to kick off our introductions with icebreakers. Holly, one of our three assistant directors of residence life, why don't you get us started by introducing yourself, telling us about your favorite thing about working for housing and your local food place in Bellingham or your favorite local food place. Hi everybody, my name is Holly Diaz and uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I, I've been working with housing for about eight years now, <clears throat> going on nine years, I think. And one of my favorite things about working with housing is we get to see students where they live, sometimes work, and um, also where they're going to school. So we get to see a very holistic view um, of that development over the course of their time with us at Western. Um, my favorite place to eat in Bellingham, we just had a, a little bit of a debate about this affordability and um, or special night out. My special night out place is Deanna's and my affordable place to go is Taco Lobos. Awesome, thank you. Richard, as our second assistant director for Residence Life, tell us what your favorite thing about working for Residence Life is and where you like to dine locally. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Richard Henderson. I'm an assistant director uh, for Residence Life. My favorite things working uh, in Residence Life is getting close to the student leaders and the student staff and getting to see them develop throughout the, their time with us and seeing that progression. Uh, also, my favorite eatery would be El Agave on Samish, which is a Mexican restaurant just not too far from Western. So I like to go there for uh, the lunch special if I can. Awesome. Thanks, Richard. Last but not least, the Associate Director for Residence Life. We have the same prompt. Tell us a little about your your favorite thing about working for on-campus housing and where you like to eat locally. Yeah, so um, Vicki Vanwer, if you she, her pronouns. Um, my favorite thing about working in residence life is just seeing student growth throughout the year. Um, I really love when first year students come on campus and um, get to know others uh, living on campus, make sometimes lifelong friends, um, get involved, get connected in clubs and organizations. Uh, through our Hall Council and different um, clubs and organizations on campus um, and really see them thrive throughout their first year at Western and then also seeing those returning students come back um, and really mentor, um, coach and lead in our different communities, um, put on programs and events um, and also um, engage in their, their own connections here at Western as well. My favorite place to eat, there's a lot of them, but um, just went last week to um, La Fiamma Pizza. Um, I'm from Buffalo, New York, so big pizza person. Um, and that's the only thing that I've seen that comes somewhat close to uh, the good pizza in Buffalo. Awesome, thank you. And once again, thank you to the panelists for joining us. For all those watching right now, feel free to send us questions in the chat. Um, but to start it off, um, this will go back to you, Vicki. So what are some of the new policies implemented this year? Yeah, so we have um, a lot of new policies and practices and procedures um, just to make sure all of our community members are safe and healthy with COVID-19 and navigating um, the pandemic that we're all facing now. So just wanted to touch on a few of those. Some of the, the main ones are around face coverings. Um, we require face coverings in all public areas um, in campus and then also in the residence halls. So any lounge, um, community space, anywhere outside of a student's room we require face masks to be worn. Um, and for students to stay within, uh, you know, six feet apart from each other as well for physical distancing. 
Um, some also, also some other changes we made is to our visitor policy. So because of the pandemic until restrictions ease a little bit and we move into other phases, um, we're not allowing guests in resident buildings uh, or guests outside of the residence hall. So if a student has to walk outside, for example, um, they should be visiting other students in another building. However, they can um, really build a lot of connections within their own community. Um, and have students that live in the same residential building um, visit their room, hang out in lounges, um, just to make sure that they're engaging, connecting with others. They can also go to other buildings, um, but we ask that they stay in the main lounge areas um, on the first floor in those public spaces, um, really to make sure that we're reducing the spread as much as possible and we're physically distancing in those spaces. Um, so they're able to enter resident, other residence halls, but really ask that visitors stay within their, their own residential building within the student rooms. Um, and then other than that, um, students will see some other changes coming back as well. So a lot of our policies are meant to reduce congestion, um, a lot of large groups. So students will see things like stairwells being marked, um, kind of where to go up, where to go down, um, which doors enter and exit, and all of those are for the health and safety of our students, uh, making sure that we're reducing congestion in um, large public spaces and really monitoring that. So those are some of the, the big changes in terms of, of health and safety. Awesome. Thank you, Vicki. Along similar lines, what is university residences plan if there is a positive test or an outbreak on campus? Yeah, so if there is a um, positive test on campus, we do have isolation spaces available where students would relocate from their current residence hall space um, and move to what we call an isolation space if they have tested positive or if they're experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. And we have a really strong partnership with our Student Health Center. Um, Holly's been working on a lot of these processes just to make sure that the student feels supported, uh, that they have the medical care that they need. Um, our residents life staff will check in with them um, just to make sure they're not feeling isolated, that they're still connected to programs and services on campus. But we relocate them to another residence hall until they recover, um, which is usually about um, two weeks until they're, they're cleared from the student health center. There's also um, quarantine space available on campus. It's a similar process. So quarantine space is for students who interact with somebody or come in close contact with somebody who has tested positive. And it's a similar process where they would relocate and we help them do that, um, relocate to another residence hall on campus. Um, and then they stay there again for about two weeks until they're cleared from the student health center. Um, and we'll check in, make sure medical needs are met again. Um, but sometimes those students feel healthy, um, but they need to quarantine because they've interacted with somebody or had close contact with somebody who has tested positive. Um, so we'll provide some more information as well when students move in just about what that process looks like. Um, and if a student has to move to an isolation or quarantine space, we'll have a lot of contact um, just around how to do that, um, support services involved with that, but everything's taken care of in terms of amenities, cleaning, um, food, all of those kinds of things are already taken care of for that student. Awesome, thank you again. Uh, next up is Richard. So there have been a lot of questions about staffing on campus. How has COVID-19 and the reduction of occupancy numbers limited or impacted staffing? Gracias. Hola, mi nombre es Ricardo. Yo supervise a los administradores de estudiantes uh, en los dormitorios. Uh, in terms of student staff, we're looking at, um, we're still going to have student staff. I'm a professional staff. So uh, myself, Holly, and Christian are here, assistant directors, and we will see the areas. Uh, on campus, uh, the south, the ridge, and north, and then each building that will have students in it um, has a full-time master's level um, supervising resident director or resident director assigned to it. With that, there's also resident advisors um, that are attributed to each floor. How we break up is a little bit different, but each uh, resident will have a go-to RA that they can have. There's also inclusion assistants. Um, they do a lot of the mentorship, the programming, and the kind of small and large group facilitation to make sure um, we're meeting you know, goals of inclusivity and sense of belonging. We also have 
two um, RHA members, uh, which are yet to be elected. So if you're listening and you like student leadership, that, uh, keep your eye for that. That's the Residence Hall Association. So it's kind of a student um, governing board. It's not kind of, it is a student governing board. Uh, there's there's going to be two for the National Residence Hall Honorary, and they'll work in close proximity to do a lot of the larger scale programming and student government and student advising. And even though not staff, um, but we will have student leadership positions still for our hall and community councils, which do a lot of the kind of fun social programming, pushing initiatives, and a lot of the student leadership. So we're still going to be heavily staffed. Um, uh, hopefully we have, got, we have a reduction obviously but it will still look um, hopefully the residents won't see a difference because by ratio and by design we, we still have enough staff to cover uh, as well student staff as well as full-time professional staff awesome thank you we'll be heading back to vicky so what is the moving app and how can we access it yeah, so the moving application is something new that we're um, launching this year. Um, so you'll get an email with uh, more information about with the link and um, when it is, is, it will launch hopefully next week, um, you'll see it to sign up for a move in time. Um, so on the application, you'll see some of the policies and procedures that we're talking about with COVID-19 and what to expect that um, is a little bit different this year than a, a typical year in residence life. Um, so we'll be able to review um, move-in information, guidelines around um, who to bring with you. Um, we're allowing two guests that move in um, to help with the move-in process. So things like that um, that you want to know before you arrive. Also things like where to park, um, where to go to pick up your keys, all of that important information that you need to know um, for move-in day. And you'll also be able to sign up for a move-in time. We're having all students sign up this year. That's for physical distancing. So there's only each hour of move in, there's only, you know, between two to 10 students moving in at a time in each of the buildings. Um, so it'll be really spread out. Traffic will be much less than a, a typical year. Um, and you'll be moving in with just a few students at a time to really promote physical distancing. Um, so you'll sign up for that time, review a lot of information. Um, and be able to refer back to that um, on your move-in day, just to rem remind yourself where to park, where to go, um, and how to access your keys. Great. Um, so for Holly, what happens with schoolwork if you are quarantined? Are teachers understanding? Yes, we're working with um, disability access services and the um, and the dean's office to um, make sure that we're supporting students um, in that process. In addition, we have a professional staff member from our team that will be reaching out to students on a daily basis. There'll be health um, personnel also doing that, but there'll be another layer of support so that we can check in about any needs that the student has to try to minimize their um, want to leave that space. Um, and what are some ways that we can support their academics as well and help to provide connections when possible. Awesome. Uh, for Richard, will residence hall still have events? Yes, uh, yes, they will. It's going to look a little different. Obviously, um, we're still in phase two, which is really five people or below. But um, uh, Vicky and the fall welcome team and uh, our staff have been working hard to divide a, a variety of in-person programming, but also a lot of virtual programming as well. So yes, there will be. Some of them will be campus-wide. Some of them will be hall-specific. And so um, some of them are putting on with our campus partners as well. So there will at least be, in the first two weeks, we'll have something almost every night, either campus-wide or with us. Uh, and so it'll be a combination of in-person when we can, what we'd ideally like, but we're still following the guidelines as well as virtual. So we still want to really focus on the connection. We know connection's huge in the first two to four weeks. So we really want to make sure we're doing that through RA floor meetings, um, tours of the building, scavenger hunts, games, uh, movie nights, and all that good stuff um, as well. So looking forward to partnering with our student leadership and campus partners, partners to provide uh, a variety of, of social programs as well as learning opportunities. Um, so next up will be Vicky. So will my family be able to help me move in? Yeah, your family would definitely be able to help you move in. Um, families, friends, and um, guests of students have always been really critical to our move-in process. So um, you're able to, we're reducing the number of people you can bring just because of COVID-19, but you're able to bring two guests with you um, to help you with the move-in process. We just ask that they're over the age of 13. 
Um, and we have a health survey that they would fill out um, before arrival and we'll give you that information um, before you move in on your move in day, um, just to make sure that um, no one's experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 before they get to campus. But you're definitely welcome to have guests with you, um, help move in in the move in process, um, take you to dinner or lunch or whatever, take a tour of campus outside, um, whatever you're looking to do that day um, before they depart Western. But yes, most definitely you're able to have family or friends come with you to move in. For the next question, we'll be going to Holly. So how will housing keep residents safe? Um, we've spent a lot of time over the last six months exploring this question with um, for ourselves and also our campus partners um, and have made a lot of adjustments. So I think between um, creating indoor, outdoor, being really thoughtful about each of the buildings, um, the processes and policies that we put into place and how we plan to enforce those um, as, as much as possible. Um, but it is a partnership, I should say, that um, there's student behavior that needs to be considered as well. So um, while we are doing our best on our end to make sure that um, we're doing what we can to control the environment um, and to hold people accountable in, in an educational and um, compassionate way. Um, and also to help the, the students that may um, need to be quarantined or isolated in a timely manner. Um, it, it is a partnership and students do have some responsibility in that as well. Great, thank you. So the next question will be going to Richard. So um, someone asked, can I visit my sister if she lives in another building? I'm going to defer it to Vicki just for the, the, clear, the clearness of the answer. Yeah, so you can visit your sister in another building, but um, we ask that you stay in the main lobby area in that public space of the building um, and not go through the building um, to the different floors and the community bathrooms in your sister's room. Um, so you're, you are able to visit, but just in those public spaces in the main, main lobbies, main lounge, um, all of our buildings have um, the first floor, um, like usually a, a pretty large space um, for like games, studying, um, it's a, a public space, usually pretty big. Um, so you're able to visit there, um, just not in the, the upper floors. If you had an emergency or urgent need, you are able to request an exemption or an exception from your resident director. Um, so you can reach out to them. Those folks um, are what, who Richard talked about earlier. They live in the building, they work in the building, they have an office there. Um, so if you have questions or concerns, you can always check in with them too. Um, so if you have an emergency need, please let us know. But uh, if it's just kind of general visiting, we just ask that you stay in that, that main lobby area. Next up, this question will go to Holly. So can students quarantine at home if they've been exposed? Absolutely. We actually encourage um, students if they are able to um, quarantine in their permanent um, place of residence, that's preferable. And I think a lot of students and families probably would re prefer that. And with that said, um, we definitely will um, do our best to accommodate if, if that's not an option for a student. Awesome. And then this will be going back to Vicki. So do students with no symptoms have to get a COVID test and quarantine for 14 days before moving into a residence hall? Good question. Um, no, um, you don't, nobody has to quarantine for 14 days when they move in. However, we are testing all students for COVID-19 on move-in day. Um, so part of the move-in process is you'll um, get to campus. Um, your first stop will be um, a tent with our student health center where you'll get tested for COVID-19. Um, they're telling us that it's a really easy process. It's not like the old procedure where um, you know, it's a little more impactful than what it sounds like now. Right now it's a quick swab in your nose and um, you're good to go. It just takes a couple seconds. And then um, you'll move through our process at that point to pick up your keys. Um, another big piece of testing though is five to seven days before your move in, you're required to get a COVID-19 test wherever you live locally. 
Um, so you want to reach out to your local health department um, to figure out where testing is occurring. Um, in Wacom, for example, you can make an appointment through drive-through testing or contact your primary care physician um, to get a referral um, to get a COVID-19 test. So within five to seven days of your arrival, you want to get that test and then email that to the Student Health Center. Um, and we'll send out information in our newsletter today that email is in there, um, but we'll keep sending out that information to remind students um, to make sure you get that test five to seven days before arrival. Um, it's really crucial that you get that before your move-in day. Awesome, and this will be going back to you too for the next question. So what will the exceptions for student visitors be? Um, if a fellow student was to come to our dorm, it was stated that, there, that an exception would be made um, so then what are those exceptions? Yeah, so the exceptions are really for emergency purposes. So um, an example might be if I um, injured myself or um, had supplies being dropped off by a parent or a friend and I wasn't able to do that on my own, um, or I had a, a critical need, a medical need, or um, a mental health concern. Um, so something that's, that's urgent, that um, I can't maybe leave my hall for and somebody needs to come in, that would be an emergency need or a more urgent request. Um, and if you have questions about that, you can always contact your resident director just to talk through kind of what that looks like and what kinds of things we approve. Um, but it really needs to be something critical um, and something that, that's pretty emergency or really urgent and immediate need um, and really not, not just um, hanging out or um, missing someone. We know those things are, are really important, um, but we're hoping that, you know, having that time in public spaces or outside on campus or going for a walk or something like that will also be able to meet those needs or traveling off campus to visit people will also meet that need. Um, but you definitely want to talk to your, your resident director if you have questions about that. And we can talk through that more. Awesome. Thank you. Next up is Richard. So Western has green coats um, who are campus safety escorts. So will there be green coats this year? Um, yeah, there will be in different a different form. It's actually going to be uh, housing safety assistance, which will be for university residences, and they'll primarily primarily be doing um, perimeter walks uh, outside and inside the residence halls. Also, uh, just looking for any prop doors, any kind of maintenance things, preventive maintenance and safety, so they can report those things quickly. Uh, they'll also be doing, um, if people are locked out, they'll be assisting with that. So that's the people we would call. Again, we have, we have student staff and professional staff on call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. So there's always someone there. In terms of the former Green Coat program, University Police are read, um, looking to change that. I believe it's going to be called um, uh, Peer housing, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, let's see. It's, it's not going to be called Green Coat, but it's going to be called something else. But they'll also, uh, they're still want to do the escort walks around campus, which we know there's high demand for. And so we don't want to lose that. So basically, the Green Coat program, the student program will still have um, walks for students around campus, and housing will have their own version of it, which will be primarily for preventive maintenance, security walks, and also uh, making sure if anyone's locked out, they have assistance with that, as well as RAs are still always around as well, and we have staff on call. Thank you. Uh, for Holly, are you going to test students when they have been exposed to another student who tested positive? Yes, yes. Um, and depending um, if they've been exposed um, and they live on campus, they um, will be um, encouraged to quarantine at home or we'll need to go into quarantine on campus. Uh, so it'll be a combination of quarantine and um, follow up with the Whatcom County Health Department Student Health Services for further um, addressing of it, but testing will be a part of that. This will be for Vicki. So what if the school has to send all students back home? Will there be a full or partial financial return for our housing payment? Yeah, so we, um, we're hoping that's not the case, but um, our planning, if that does happen, so um, most definitely any, any in the spring, for example, um, when COVID-19 kind of first came about, 
Um, we allowed any student out of their housing contract and refunded uh, the amount for the remainder of the quarter. So that would happen again. Um, we would parade that amount for however long um, the student did live with us um, and then return the rest of that, those housing and dining fees. So most definitely we would return that, that financial contribution. Next up is Richard. So are the dorms single occupancy? occupancy, uh, will I be bored? No, uh, uh, they are single occupancy. Um, well, uh, and they are single occupancy except for Burnham Wood. Um, but, you know, in a lot of ways, it's going to be um, a fantastic way to have a little bit of privacy, but also be able to engage as well. And so looking at that, it definitely is an opportunity. Um, like I mentioned before, there's still going to be ample um, connection activities in terms of programming, both virtual and in person. I think we can still meet just in smaller groups. So we're hoping you'll actually develop more meaningful, long-lasting connections as opposed to maybe many connections that don't um, have as such an impact. So uh, yes, single room occupancy, um, which we'll hopefully look at as a benefit. You have that time to study and de-stress and a space to yourself, but there will still be um, avenues to engage with others, both virtually and online, sorry, in person. Thank you. And then for Vicky, so Burnham Wood was mentioned. I know Burnham Wood is um, kind of different from the other residence halls, but um, is it still a single occupancy? Yeah, so Burnham Wood, um, we just, we recently changed that, but Burnham Wood will be a single occupancy as well. So there's two bedrooms in Burnham Wood and then sharing a uh, bathroom and kitchen and common space area. Um, so there'll be two people per apartment, but single occupancy rooms. Awesome, thank you. Uh, for Holly, is there going to be a quarantine after students move in? Um, no, not necessarily. No, there's not a, a quarantine after students move in unless they've been exposed, knowingly exposed to um, COVID. And then back to Vicki. So um, as someone asked, in my area, it's still taking over five days to get tests back. If I get the test done five to seven days before I get to campus, I might not hear back in time. Any idea of what to do? Yeah, there's a couple different options there. Just um, communicate with us um, and let us know. You can email us um, at reslife, R-E-S-L-I-F-E, at www.edu and um, change your move-in date and time. So that's one option is to delay your move-in until you're able to get those test results back and we can accommodate that really easily. Um, a few other options are um, if you did want to move in um, right away and didn't want to worry about that and stick to your time. Um, we also encourage you to check out other health departments around your area. Um, so if your county maybe is delayed or um, taking longer than what you would like to get a test or test results back, um, looking in, around your local area, places within driving distance, uh, another option that we're telling students about is our health center can start testing um, those first few days of move-in and tests come back within 24 to 48 hours. So for example, our first day of move-in is September 17th. So if you want to move in on the 19th, um, you could come on the 17th, get tested by our student health center. Um, it takes between one and two days to get those test results back. So as soon as you get those results back, you can move in at that point. Um, so you could come to Bellingham, um, stay in a, a local hotel, um, see the sites um, around the area, explore Bellingham a little bit, and then move in as soon as you get those test results back. Um, so there are a few different options there, but um, please reach out if you have questions or individual concerns and we can make sure that we accommodate your needs and, and what you need from us. Awesome, thank you. And then as a follow-up, what will happen if your area doesn't allow you to test because you don't have any symptoms? Yeah, if your area doesn't allow you to test, um, I would suggest that last option, maybe coming to Bellingham, if you're able to, I know there's a financial cost to that to stay in a hotel. Um, so, also, you reach out to us and let us know. We can contact our Student Health Center or reach out to the Student Health Center directly um, and see if there's any other options there. Um, another piece of that is um, you, if you come to campus without that test, it's really important because we, if we check it your move-in day to make sure that you have that. 
um, test five to seven days before. If you don't have that, we require you to self-isolate in your room. Um, so until you get your test results back from move-in. So for example, if you come to move-in, um, don't have that test from your local health department, and we don't have that, that you're cleared um, with that test, then when you move in, you're still gonna get tested for COVID-19 from our own student health center here at Western, but you have to self-isolate in your room and not leave your room for one to two days until those results come back. Um, so we really encourage you to do everything you can to get that test result before you arrive on campus. It's really important so we can get you your keys and make sure you have a good experience and can leave your room and connect with others um, right away at move in. Great, thank you so much. Uh, for the next question, this will be going to Richard. So can you tell us about the dorm activities to help get the students to know each other? Yeah, sure. Um, so initially when you come in, there'll be, uh, depending on what day you come, but there'll be a, f um, like a floor gathering every night to get introduced with your RA and other people who've just moved in that day. They'll obviously go over some basic information of kind of the what, who, why, where, when. Um, but as they get closer um, to the classes starting, uh, again, we'll be working in combination with the campus wide to look at kind of these welcome week activities that look different and convocation. So some of the things you can think of uh, will be a lot of um, like team development, floor development, building development, how to get shared identity in Fairhaven or Buchanan Towers or whatever that looks like. And so hopefully the student staff member will be trained on having these kind of conversations and knowing uh, who's who and trying to kind of map people together with similar interest. Um, and they do that you know, very skillfully and obviously not forcefully. And so that's one way, uh, like I mentioned, there'll still be in-person programming. There'll be walks of the building and tours and you'll develop uh, kind of those friendships that are happening as well, hopefully within class and, and other parts of um, welcoming. But again, there, there won't be a one size for everybody. It's going to be a combination of in-person, working with your RA and then also virtually. But any questions, I would, I would direct them to their RA or their full-time resident director and they can give them a full layout of what's happening every night and there's going to be something happening every day and every night while, they, while they're there. Next up is Holly. So with the pandemic limiting many freshmen to virtual classes, is living on campus still mandatory or heavily recommended? Um, it's not mandatory to begin with. We're, we're not a mandatory first year um, housing school. Um, I think it, it really is a personal decision. Um, I think that a lot of students um, coming in for their freshman year are probably very excited about that opportunity um, to start college and connect. But um, and, and there are pros and cons, of course. It's going to be quite a different experience than you would typically have. But I know we're working really hard on our end to try to make it as meaningful as we can um, with different engagement opportunities and the different student services around campus are also doing this as well. But it really is a personal, a personal choice. Thank you. Um, this will go back to Vicki. So following up with testing and moving in, so someone asked, what happens if I test positive five to seven days before my move-in day? Do I get my move-in date pushed back? Yeah, so if you um, test positive, you just want to contact us at that um, ResLife email. So it's R-E-S-L-I-F-E at www.edu. If you want to contact us and we can um, change your move-in date, again, we'll be really flexible with that. So if you do test positive, we ask that you stay home. Uh, or stay in your permanent residence and then just let us know. Um, contact us and we'll reschedule that for you um, as soon as you're cleared by our student health center and as soon as you, you have a negative test. Going to Richard, so can someone off campus who is not tested come visit someone on site? Uh, no, not, not, that's not, I mean, they can try, I guess they can do that, but that's not what we would recommend is being, you don't really allow guests, right, unless you're from that building, so kind of like he was alluding to earlier. Um, so someone who's off campus, no, they, they would not be prohibited to be in the residence hall um, and, join, and join the other folks who are assigned there. Thank you. Um, next up is Holly. So will the Ridge reopen if restrictions lift? And if so, can we transfer from a different dorm to the Ridge um, if it does? Um, 
I want to be hopeful that um, sooner than later uh, that we will be out of a pandemic, but I think we're going to err on the side of caution probably um, for the next, definitely for fall quarter, maybe into winter quarter, I'm not quite sure. But if the opportunity and, um, and the governor's guidance is allowing, would allow that, then I don't see why we wouldn't go in that direction. Next up is Vicki. So can you explain how ship my room works? I know there's a $100 fee, but how does it work? Uh, where will our items be kept and how can they be retrieved? Yeah, great question. So this is a new program this year for us, um, something we're really excited about. Um, I think we'll keep it too after COVID-19 is over um, just because it's a good opportunity for students and families. So how it works is you're able to ship your belongings to Western. Um, so just in, you know, boxes how you normally would move. Um, so you ship those things to us and we'll give you the address for that with your room number um, and your name specified on there. So we know um, who you are and where it goes. So those items end up, when you do ship them to us, they end up in our mail services unit. Um, so it's a building on campus that uh, really processes all mail of campus. So then at that point, um, for that $100 fee, the reason we charge that fee is it's a delivery fee. So some of our staff will take those items, your boxes from mail services, transport them to your residence hall and um, leave them in your room for you. So it's really um, no hassle moving. Um, so you beat the lines, the traffic, um, all of those types of things. You still have to get that COVID-19 test and um, We'll schedule for that on the move-in day, but you don't have to wait in um, any type of line at all. You just get right in. Um, you walk up to your room and all of your stuff is there, ready to unpack. That sounds super convenient. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, next is Holly. So what is housing going to look like after Thanksgiving break? Do we have to take everything home from our rooms? Are we going to have to pay for those months that we aren't there? Um, we do not close after Thanksgiving. So um, students can stay through the break, through Christmas if they want, um, and that's, that's typical. We are encouraging students to be thoughtful about what they're bringing to campus in, just in case we have to close again. And we're, no one wants that to happen, um, but um, maybe do not bring as much as you maybe thought that you were initially, just in case things need, you need to reverse it and take things home. But um, they are welcome to stay. They don't have to pack up their rooms and go unless we have other um, orders from our governor or our institution. Going back to Vicki, so um, someone said, I'm in the Honors College and was told to move in date, and was told the move in date is September 15th. How does that change? Yeah, so um, the Honors College, they usually do, um, in a more typical year, they usually do, um, it's called the Honors Prologue, which is the orientation to honors, um, and do a lot of in-person events. That has been delayed because of COVID-19, so the Honors College is still doing a lot of programming, events, orientation, welcoming students to Edens Hall, where a lot of the Honors students live. Um, so you'll get an update from honors and also us. So the first day will be that that 17th move in date um, because of the honors prologue is, was delayed a little bit. Um, so you'll get an update soon around um, move in dates and times. You'll be able to sign up for your own move in date and time based on the, the times available um, and then still take part in all those activities that honors is planning. Thank you. Uh, next up is Richard. So how is the social distancing able to take place when there are a lot of people or when there are all people visiting in main lobby? Uh, our facilities team have actually did a very creative job in um, moving all the furniture around so that it is, uh, does meet the physical distancing guidelines. There obviously will be some onus on the students themselves as Holly described, but um, that's what we were asking people not to move the furniture and not, you know, not pick up and try and huddle the futons and the couches together because obviously that would be beneficial. But the way the design and hopefully there'll be some markings as well that are visible and some signage. So if we adhere to that, of how many people can be there in the, in the furniture is not moved and people stick to the markings, then the distancing would 
would be able to, to meet. And obviously, like I mentioned, if someone's not doing that, we encourage you to call our staff. It's 24 hour on call staff, and then we would be able to talk to the people involved. And we'll also be monitoring it via our desk attendants, our full time staff who live in the building, as well as our full time to make sure, uh, sorry, as well as our student staff uh, to make sure that people are adhering to those physical distancing guidelines. Awesome. Going to Vicky. So there was a mention of a health survey in the email that you sent. Can you elaborate more on what that is? Yeah, so the health survey is basically every day, um, any student who's on campus, so that includes all of our residential students, and then any student who's attending an in-person class um, fills out a survey. It's really quick, um, just a few questions, and it really asks about your symptoms. If you're experiencing any symptoms of COVID-19, um, and what you're experiencing. So our student health center can reach out um, and make sure that you get any medical attention that you need um, and get you tested if that is needed as well. Um, just to make sure um, that you're taken care of and that we're keeping the, the entire community safe. Thank you. The next question will go to Holly. So what is the first night we can sleep in the dorms as well as use our meal plan? Um, our first night is the 17th uh, now, yes. Our first night is the 17th and it's it's based on the uh, time that you sign up for or are assigned. Vicki, I'm not sure about the meal plans. Can you answer that? Yeah, so meal plans will be available. Um, they should be available that first night as well. We're still working with dining to confirm that, but that first day when you move in, um, you'll have access to dining halls and then um, possibly we have retail locations on campus, so it'll be much more limited just because we don't have as many students on campus. Um, but there will be food options available right from that first day. Awesome. Uh, for Richard, so provided that we are safe and of course making smart decisions with regard to social distancing, if we leave campus to hang out with friends, will we be, still, will we be able to still come back into the dorm? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, people are going to, we can kind of control the residence hall the best we can. And, and like I mentioned, we just put some onus on student behavior and student ownership of decisions. And of course, we want fiscal guidelines and this, the state's guidelines as well followed. But yes, um, you can you can go hang out with friends and, and then come back. And again, we just, we just hope that if you are having any symptoms or anything bad, you utilize the health center and it's, it's not an onus. Sometimes it's not going to be anyone's fault. It's just going to happen, but we just try to provide safety as much as we can. So we just encourage people to, if they are having any symptoms or if they came back or they've been somewhere, um, go ahead and meet with the health center and get one of those quick, easy tests that Vicky was talking about. Next up is Holly. So can students move their dorm room at break to live with a roommate if they wish to? Sorry, can you repeat that again, Francis? I apologize. Yeah, so um, I think the student's asking if they can move from their dorm room during break um, to live with a roommate if they wish to. Um, we're, we're, there's no roommates at this time. Um, everyone will have um, a single space, a single room. They may be sharing a suite with someone with someone else. And our we do typic, in a typical year have a transfer process, but that's going to be extremely limited because of our um, the way that we've had to uh, our space occupancy right now. So it will be it's a possibility, but it's going to be very limited. Now, if restrictions ease, that's a different story. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next up is Vicki. So will the tests on campus be free to student? Yeah, testing is all free um, and covered by Western. So um, you'll be tested that first move-in day, but then also periodically throughout the quarter as well. So you'll be tested um, within groups of 10, which is people who you interact with most frequently around your floor, or your wing. Um, and we test those students together um, just to see, you know, within in clusters to see if there's any positive results and then go from there if there is and we'll, we'll test students individually. Um, but yes, everything's free and covered by Western and taken care of right on campus by our Student Health Center. Awesome. Next up is Richard. So how will the relationship between RAs and residents be changing? So for example, will one-on-one -on -one still exist in some form? 
this must be a former RA who asked that question. Um, yes, uh, the, the relationship is going to be a little bit different, right? Of course, as we have less student staff and, and we we're also want to make sure that we're checking the spaces and the lounges and the perimeters to make sure that we're adhering to all the safety. So it will look a little different. I'd say the benefit is our full time staff have a little bit more capacity, hopefully, to jump in and do a lot of these intentional conversations as well. But the student staff will be doing them. Uh, that's, and if people are familiar, that's um, those student leaders getting to know the residents on a one on one, but also a small group basis and so that'll still be happening uh, i think there'll just be a little bit more onus on the field time staff to also chip in and get involved and i think that's a benefit actually uh, as well as the programming that we mentioned happening early earlier both virtually and in person by the paid staff but also the student leadership as well so hopefully um, it's an opportunity for for more access and more visibility um, with all of our staff to get involved with students Next up, this question will be going to Vicki. So what is the percentage of freshmen coming onto campus? Yeah, so we're um, still identifying that actually because of, um, we pushed our, I'm sure you all know this already, but um, we pushed our room selection process um, way back this year just to give students the chance to register for classes um, and see what the class schedule is gonna look like before they select rooms with us um, on campus. Um, so, Right now, I don't know what the percentages are just because students are still selecting rooms, but we do have a lot of returners and we do have a lot of first year students. Um, hesitant to give any numbers because I don't know what they are exactly right now and that's still um, being determined based on students selecting those rooms. Um, but there will be um, both returning students and new. Um, one thing to know too is a lot of our returning students choose Burnham Wood and Buchanan Towers. Um, so there's usually every year, but this year is the same, that there's um, a lot more students. Burnhamwood is only returners, and then Buchanan Towers has a lot of returners as well. And then um, a lot of our other buildings are majority first year students. Um, and that will look very, uh, very typical to uh, another traditional year. This next question will be going to Holly. So how do we get testing prior to moving on to campus if testing is reserved for people who have come in contact with someone who is positive only or has symptoms in my area? Yes, yeah, similar to what Vicki had shared earlier, um, <clears throat> there's, we suggest um, contacting your local health department for options um, or the surrounding health departments. I know even there's significant differences even between our county and Skagit County, which is right below us um, as far as accessibility. And so um, looking at those options right around you. Also, um, our health department right now, our health department or health center excuse me student health center um i know dr david hansen's been answering a lot of questions about this too um so contacting our student health center is a really great option and they can help brainstorm options for you as well and lastly like vicky had shared um coming a little bit early and um and getting that test we could provide that test in a in a quick manner uh, before move in too that is an option Awesome, thank you. Uh, for Richard, so to what extent will student clubs be uh, still be operating? Yes, good question. Uh, and maybe I'd maybe check in with um, the Associated Students about it, but from my understanding, they're still going to be running. And again, um, the AS, the Associated Students are hiring, I believe still all their, all their student staff, they're just going to be able to operate virtually. And so, and one of the best things about the student clubs is that they're, they're very heavily reliant on the students running them, right? And we do have advisors and we do help with reservation spaces and administrivia. But uh, if there's a desire, I think they'll go ahead and like the rest of us, they'll be creative in, in how they're meeting and smaller groups versus virtual. But um, they're still, the student clubs are still going to go ahead. And if there's uh, not a club that you want to see you, you'll still be able to start that up i believe the process is online and i believe it's five or so members to start up and you can designate yourself an advisor or one can be designated for you but um yeah there's over 200 student organizations at western and um, they'll still be operational it'll just look a little different awesome thank you um so to vicky so what happens if we opt out of housing in fall and are on a wait list for winter or spring yeah, so that, that's totally fine. So we're, um, we'll keep you um, on that wait list and definitely contact you. 
um, in the fall quarter when winter quarter is um, quickly approaching. And then um, we'll be able to determine from there uh, what restrictions look like in the county um, and within the state if we're able to open up some more housing options with our on campus units as well. Um, so you definitely have the opportunity um, to live on campus if you defer in the fall. That's um, completely fine. Next up is Holly. So how is dining services going to be operating? Um, they are, um, they have created uh, spaces in the dining halls that are socially distant, um, but they really are relying a lot on um, takeout. And so you can order online to do takeout. They have takeout boxes. Vicki, do you want to, you've had a little bit more conversations with um, Aramark about this. Do you want to step in? Yeah, so um, the dining halls will be fully operational. Like Holly said, there's a lot of to-go options right now. And then um, when restrictions ease up a little bit, then we'll allow more in-dining options. Um, there are some opportunities to in the dining hall right now um, with small groups of people, um, but we really follow the state's restrictions with that. So right now, um, you can only have up to five people gathering and for restaurants, it's within your same household. So we're determining what that means for on-campus students if it happy within your same suite or apartment, for example. Um, so especially in the warmer months um, when students first get back, we really encourage that to go option, um, eating outside. Um, RAs will bring students to floor dinners, um, eat outside in a physically distanced way in small groups. Um, so there's opportunities there as well um, to connect. Uh, and then there'll also be some limited retail locations open on campus too. So we're still defining what those are, but um, there are some spaces for to-go options there as well. Awesome. And this next question will be going to you too, Vicki. Um, so where do we send test results to immunize, immunizations or is it sufficient to show the results in an app on your phone? Yeah, so you want to send the results to the Student Health Center. Um, their email will be included in all of our email locations. The email that we sent out today has it. Um, so you want to make sure that the Student Health Center receives that before your move-in day. So it's, it's not acceptable to have it on an app on your phone. Um, we have to be able to receive that before you get to campus and before you move in, um, or we'll be contacting you um, to alter or delay your move-in day if we don't have that by that move-in time. Awesome, thank you. And then also in the email that was sent out, there's also a typo with the email. So the correct one is student.health at www.edu, um, just to get that in the air. So next up is Holly. So how often will the periodic testing occur? Um, I just saw this earlier today. Vicki, is it every two to three weeks? Yeah, it's, it's once every two to three weeks and you'll get a notification um, through your health portal, I think it is, um, that it, it's ready. You're, you're, you need to show up at this time, please. <laughs> and, and there'll be follow up if, if there's not communication. Next up is Richard. So I'm in Buchanan, Buchanan Towers as a freshman. Will I still have access to events for freshmen? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, Buchanan Towers, it should, it'll be um, living in the South Campus and you'll have <coughs> full-time staff and full, there'll be power professional staff as well. And so, yeah, absolutely. Um, the South Campus has really got a good community. Um, with past years, there's a lot of regional programming. Buchanan Towers has a strong sense of identity and leadership in the, in the student positions the last few years. So, uh, yeah, you'll have, you'll have access to all the campus-wide events as well as the community events. Awesome, thank you. Uh, going back to Holly, so do you need a Western ID upon moving in? Not upon moving in, but you'll want to get one um, shortly um, after. Awesome. Um, next, this question is going to Vicki. So someone asked, if we have a family staying in a hotel off campus, are we able to stay with them overnight for a night and come back to campus without getting tested? or will we have to be tested on arrival back to campus? 
You can. Um, you can stay overnight in a hotel um, for those move-in days. So we test you um, when you come onto campus for your, your move-in day. Um, but you're welcome at that point to um, stay in a hotel, stay in your room. That's completely optional up to you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so then going to Richard. So for tutoring, is it still online with Zoom? In turn, will the library be open to students with accommodation? Yeah, it's going to happen once. Um, from my understanding, uh, advising and tutoring, I believe, is still all virtual. Um, there may be some accommodations made for in-person students when they arrive. In terms of the library, uh, I'm not entirely sure actually what the latest is on that, so I'll pop corn that to Holly or, or Vicky. Yeah, so the library, the, um, the latest information we have, and we'll um, send an update if this changes, but there will be specific locations in the library that are open. Um, they'll also offer a lot of virtual services as well, but um, there's specific public areas um, designated in the library that will be open to students. Awesome. And then this question will also go to you, Vicki. So what might be different about moving in if I've deferred on-campus housing until winter quarter or later? Yeah, so um, moving in in winter quarter, we're not sure yet. Um, we'll, we're monitoring health and safety guidelines, um, governor's guidelines um, from the state of Washington. Um, so it'll really depend on kind of what COVID-19 looks like um, by winter quarter. I think we'll know a little bit more um, a few months into fall quarter. Um, as we're planning to see what winter might look like. Um, so winter quarter, if I had to think into the future, I would guess that we're probably still gonna be testing um, for COVID-19 um, during move-in for winter quarter, but it'll just depend on kind of where we're at with the pandemic and what restrictions look like and what guide guidelines look like from the state. Next up is Richard. So someone asked, I've already been assigned to Buchanan Towers with my friend. If I defer to winter, can I still live with him when I arrive? Um, I believe, well, it depends on kind of our occupancy. So in terms of, and we're also single, right? Single room occupancy. So it's probably not going to be living with anybody um, and not just a friend. But in terms of assignments deferred to, to winter, depending on what assignments, what information they've gave, the room assignment may be different based on, on the demand. So I just, be in regular contact with assignments, but they won't be living unless things change um, and we can open up more. The likelihood is they won't be living with their friend. Awesome, thank you. Um, the next question will be going to Holly. So, what is the situation like with the Eden's Hall kitchen facilities? Um, I believe that we are closing off our kitchens in the halls. Is that correct, Vicki? So the hall kitchens, you can't access them, but we ask that as one person who's accessing them that you cook your, your food or, um, or you make your food and then clean the space and then um, exit that space. So just one person able to use that kitchen space at a time, um, but they are accessible. This question is also going to you, Vicki. Um, so is there a time limit for how long the two people can stay in the dorm for setup? There is no time limit. Um, there is a, we ask that when you do unload your belongings, we give you about 30 minutes uh, by the, when you pull up to the building um, and unload your things. Usually we, we found in past years, it takes about 20 minutes or so. So we extended that this year to 30, just make sure we can really promote that for people some time. Um, so you have 30 minutes to unload, but once you're in the hall, there's no time limit in terms of um, how long you stay or parents, family, friends can definitely stay until you feel is most comfortable until you're ready to go. So um, we ask that nobody stays overnight um, because of that, that new guest policy, but you're welcome to stay for however long um, it takes to, to move in and feel good about that. Awesome. Next up is Richard. So if you leave campus for a hotel stay during the quarter, will you be required to take a COVID test when you come back to campus? Holly's our COVID point person, so she'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe so. Um, again, unless you've had symptoms or you've kind of been doing something, uh, otherwise um, we're just gonna 
you'll come back and if you're feeling symptoms, then we'd, we'd urge you to get a, a test if you've been in large crowd or gathering or in, in a public space flying or something like that. But I don't believe that we'd be requiring you to because I don't think we would know. But um, I don't know if Holly or Vicky have anything to add there. I think the only thing I would add is we're, we are doing the every two to three week testing um, continuously anyway. So um, unless there's a, a specific concern, um, no. Awesome, thank you. And then for Vicki, so can you clarify more about the dining commons and when they open? Yeah, so um, we don't have a specific date yet, but they should be um, a dining hall on campus um, and then some of our retail locations will be open on the first day of move-in, so Thursday, September 17th. Awesome, thank you. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have now. Don't forget to check out the other two webinars we have coming up. Um, so once again, thank you for our amazing panelists for being here, um, and for everyone watching right now. Um, and yeah, don't forget to mask up and see you all soon.